So, you know, say more about that. That's interesting how a boss at work can, in a way, be a bully or fit the description of a bully, how a bully pushes you around to do things you don't want to do or tells you, sends words in yeah. your direction that you might not like. Just as a boss, say more about that. That's so the perception I have of you know, going to a nine to five job and having a boss is like, go to the office and you know you have to you have a whole task maybe you're an accountant maybe you're creating sales or something you have your boss telling you what to do all the time and over time it becomes you know a little sick and you're always thinking oh i have to do this i have to do this and then over time you know a bunch of stress just you know falls onto your shoulder and then your boss starts you know maybe starts using other words you know and just tries to get you to do the job, and then you realize, you know, you have a family to feed, maybe. You have to do what you're told, or else, you know, you're not gonna get your monthly salary, or, you know, that promotion that you've always wanted. Being, and being reliant, like, dependent on someone else for your, you know, freedom, isn't the way I want to go with life. Because you're kind of depending on someone for your, you know, the happiness of your life. That happiness being, you know, in your life is money, right? Because you're working for money so that you can live a comfortable life. It's all still dependent on another person. This boss, this yes. somewhat bully figure. You know? Yeah. Because okay. they have the power to, you know, cut down your salary and from there, you know, you start suffering, you have to start cutting down costs and stuff. Or, you know, they could increase your salary where you are more free, you can, you know, spread your legs a little bit, maybe buy something nice for yourself here and there. So that, but all that's still determined not by you, but by someone else that is your boss. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's one thing I never really liked. In the beginning. It's interesting to think that way already at a young age to think, to say that a boss can be in a way, in a boss or a manager, yeah. supervisor can body the title or the label of bully. It's not always like that, like where your bosses are complete dickheads, but in most cases, it's like that. Mm -hmm. Do you think that has something to do with this power, this ability to um, manipulate people or control things? The bosses? Yes. I feel like, you know, these bosses have that, you know, entitlement that other people don't. So that's where they're like, okay, you know, they have a bit of an ego and they're trying to control these things because after all, they dictate, you know, um, how that can work, you know, the amount of money you're getting. So that itself, the, the idea of them being like, okay, I can determine if this guy works here or not anymore. That's completely up to me. Sometimes they could abuse that and you know, go get what they want as well as you know having fun on top. It may be fun to them, but you know not really fun to the employee. Mm -hmm. So they can control. They can dial up the happiness. They yeah. dial back the happiness of their employees or a specific employee as well. Yeah. Just like. In the bullying experience, bullies can dial up their aggression, dial down the aggression, dial down your ha your feeling of safety, your happiness, uh, your, your quality of life. Yeah. Or they can dial it down, dial it up, 
not put too much pressure of, you know, on you, like, yeah. like they're on you today. They're, they're, they're on your neck today. Oh, they're going to get me today. Yeah. So, did, so that experience of, of bullying, are you saying that that, that sparked something inside you, that created something? That created like a, a more what did after you after this bullying it, it just on me strangely but also um, interestingly just stopped stopped nobody you didn't do anything to stop it and they didn't lighten up and slowly yeah. just taper off and no more bullying. It's just an immediate change. Now, did, so there was, there's this, something different about that. Um, and then did that, so, so how did you grow after that? Because then now you're to this point where you're, uh, where you're more, willing to be in charge, you're more willing to, to be aggressive, willing to to go after the things you, you want. And you can see your goals more now, more clearly. Well, did, did something, after that bullying in that, did something change or did you uh, do some self-talk? Did you do some discovery of yourself in that? Um, what, what happened to, to transition from not wanting to say anything or do anything, not even tell your parents, yeah. and just be quiet, just live through it, and then to now this, where you're, where you're, you're willing to say things, you're willing to stand up, you're willing to take down, you know, who, whatever obstacles in front of you. So I feel like after the bullying, I've got like a sense of confidence now. You built it's like you, yeah, just built like an overall. How did you build it? Because of the physique I was building. So working out helped yeah. you boost my confidence. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then from there, I started like you know going on YouTube and the same analogy that I had about how you had the employee and the boss. Mm -hmm. What did the employee do to, you know, become an employee? He probably went to university, you know, got the degree, applied for the job. But then I was like, let me have a different approach to this. What did the boss do to have to gain this much control over these employees? And I started going through these stories of, you know, business owners and stuff and how they talked about being different. Okay, um, there was this one business entrepreneur online, I forgot his name, but he was an Asian individual, I think Chinese, who moved from China to America. And he used to get bullied as well in school. And then, you know, he started doing different stuff when he's older. And then, you know, you know he has a multi million, billion business, right? You guys see him rolling around with Rolls Royces and stuff. So I started thinking, right, this guy kind of has the same um, past. So what did he do different that you know led him up here to now? You know, he's very successful. He's happy with where he is. What you know, different life did he take? What different options did he take? And I started realizing, you know, some people like these people that take up these degrees and stuff, take them all the way, the safe way, mm -hmm. they end up as the employees where you have to actually do something different for what you want to get. So you're not gonna, let's just say you want to become a wildlife photographer, right? You're not gonna you know, go to the university. You could take up photography, but you're not gonna get that experience that you need by just going through a class and you know, studying it. Sure, it may help, but 
what's better is if you just go out yourself and you start taking these photos, start learning, you know, where you're wrong, how you can improve it. And then from there, not only do you create something that's unique to yours, because you can find something on the way that, you know, looks pretty cool while like you're taking the photos, and then you could, you know, make it your own style of how you take these photos. It becomes something unique. You learn to advertise these things, you advertise yourself, and then you just, from there it's, you know, upscale. So then people start seeing these things, that's you know pretty cool. Start taking more interest in you know what you're building, and that's how these you know little things start. You said something earlier about taking the safe route, the employee to the safe route. Yeah. Uh, to get there, that's why they're the employee. So the manager, he took the what route did he take? The boss. The boss or manager. Yeah, what did, what did he? What route did he take? If, if the safe route kind of leads you into a more just employee type yeah. of climb to get to somewhere you or you may get stuck, just to, just the employee. But what what do you think in, in your mind? What do you think is the journey of the boss? If it's not the employee journey, then it's and you look more, you gra you gravitate more to the, the journey of the yeah. boss, of a someone to an entrepreneur, a leader, a creator, a inventor. Yeah. So, so what what is the journey? If if you call it safe for the employee, what is the journey for the boss? Bill Gates. It's one of you know, the biggest examples that I took. So instead of going to university, when you start figuring how to you know, make computers you know, do certain things, and programming them and stuff, instead of going to university, taking the safe route and getting a degree and stuff, you drop down. You start working on you know, how to program these computers. A few years later, you go out Windows. And now, from there, Windows is in almost every single computer or laptop. Mm -hmm. So he had to take the more risky way of getting there. Because it's a lot of risk. You know, because you don't, you don't have a degree, let's just say it doesn't work out. You can't get a job after, you know, your idea fails. So you had to take a big risk, which completely paid off afterwards. So now it's up here. And you have these, you know, employees that are still going through the degree, trying to figure out what they want to do. And they end up working for the same guy that took the risky route. Because mm -hmm. his invention is more valuable than that degree was. Let's just say Bill Gates didn't take, um, uh, he didn't invent Windows, he took the safe route. And yeah, he didn't take the risk. Yeah, he didn't take the risk, he took the safe route and he got a degree and said, where would he be today? Wouldn't be the richest man around. So, do you, do you think during the bullying you were in the safe route? Yeah, taking. I felt like that was the safe route, just accepting it, you know, letting it happen. Then I was like, you know, let's take a few risks. Mm. So oh, afterwards, yeah. I started caring less about what people have to say, started doing what I want to do more. And a few years later, you're there, now you're out. Doing some impressive stuff, some, some things that <clears throat> a lot of teenagers your age dream about doing 10 years later. Yeah, 15 years later, 20. Well, you're doing it now. You've done it already. Yeah, you've already had it. Three events? This is the third one. This will be the third. Yeah. yeah, you're already processing. You've already settled in yeah. a little bit. Still some more settling, but you, you got, you, yeah. you got two under your belt. Yeah. And, and, and we're successful. So, 
So what did you, because during that bully, you took the safe from You were being safe. Yeah. You were just the employee. One of those bosses were making you feel unhappy, taking your happiness away. Your happiness was a kind of a currency during that yeah. time. So they were controlling the money, but how much happiness currency you were able to have during that time. And then it changed. All of a sudden, it just changed. And still, we still haven't discovered what happened. How did that just all of a sudden change? But it changed. And then you start to, your journey continued in it, and your journey changed, your, your thinking of your life journey changed to be more in charge. What was the process of getting to there? Did it just happen or what did you, what, what sparked your mind to just, I'm gonna be different, I'm not gonna, go the same route yeah. as I did yesterday. I feel like it's been like that, but in smaller ways. It's been like that, you said? A little bit. Because, mm. you know, a few years ago, I when I didn't have this entire event and stuff, I was still, you know, doing things that normal kids would do. Because normal kids would be in school and stuff. I would be taking my online classes as well, but then in my free time, I'd just be going out with my friends doing something else or trying to learn something new. But even in that way, it was still a little different than what most kids would be doing with, you know, some kids, they like to, most kids, they like to go home and play video games and stuff. I was out, you know, trying to learn more. So I met a lot of new people as well and that helped me with my social skills and stuff and meeting more people and just creating a lot of you know fun memories for me to remember later on. I feel like that most teenagers may do that as well but for me I felt like it was really special and very different towards what other kids would be doing. Why was there, were you, what type of people were you meeting to make it different or how, how were you, how was it different? Randomly. Because then you meet these random people, right? You get to explore their stories, right? There's one day, just the other day, I met this one guy with my friends. We were at this mall. And this guy was dressed up as Superman. Very odd. In the mall, dressed as Superman. In the mall. So I was, instead of you know, just looking at him and being like, oh, he's a weirdo, I told my friend, yo, ask him for a photo. Let's get a photo with him. So then you were like, yo, can we, you know, get a photo with you? And then we started explaining to us, you know, why he was doing it. Because he was so in character with who he was. Because he had these Superman shorts on, Superman trousers, pants as well, on top of the shorts, mm -hmm. Superman shirt. And he had this like little necklace that had a green gem. And I was like, is that supposed to be kryptonite? Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, it is. He opened his phone and he's like, before you take, before you guys take a photo, what's on my wallpaper? It was a wallpaper of Superman. And then he opened his Instagram, and then all the photos he had was just him dressed up as Superman. So we asked him, he, oh, he was like, oh, I'm a real estate agent in Dubai, but whenever I'm not, you know, working, I just come down here, you know, I just do whatever I want, I really like Superman. That itself was like, you know, I, this guy does not care, he doesn't care what people have to say. Some people could, you know, be like, oh, he's a weirdo. And, but then you have these, you know, people like us who actually appreciate what he's doing. Because his message, him going out wearing a Superman suit and actually going about his day and living like a normal day in a Superman suit was normal to him and it's pretty impressive to me. Because it stands out, it's much more different than you know what normal people would do. Because it's not every day you see someone wearing a Superman suit just going about his day like it's nothing. So, you know, experiences like that, you learn a lot of things. Did you get the picture of him? Oh, I saw that. Okay. So different. So you decided to do, after that bullying experience, and after this sudden just 
disappearance of it. Yeah. It's change. You changed as well. You decided to be that Superman. To not, even in daily life, just go into the grocery store, walk in the mall, yeah. shopping, browsing. You're going to be that Superman. Am I a man? Yes, yes, yes. You were going to be a Superman of you, yourself. Your journey, your discovery of you, you were going to no longer be that employee, that safe, that under that kryptonite. Yeah. search these things to, to get inspired by different people and it, was that something always happening or did it it just happen as well mm. it sort of happened as well because mm. I started understanding that you know the people that stand out the most they have the best stories so this is you see a normal guy walking down the street you're not going to really think much of it Let's say you see someone and he's wearing something completely different. Now you're interested. Now you want to talk to him. You want to see, like, you know, why are they wearing this? Not because, you know, it's weird or anything. You just want to know what's, you know, what's different in their lives. Because he could have chosen to wear something normal and not stand out. But he chooses not to. He wants to wear a completely different thing. So that makes you want to ask, like, you know, why are you doing this? What is your message, you know? From there, you know, you tell that person will tell you, you know, what they had to go through, or you know, why they're doing it, and then you learn something new. Let's just say, you know, even if it's something childish, right? You know, like, oh, like I'm just wearing Superman suit because I want to. Even then, like, you know, there you just made a new friend. So even there, you know, you have these. You could learn something. You could make a new friend. But it's all, you know, spontaneous.
Now that the boss. Yeah. Turn it down. We're up. Because it's not the bullies. Yeah. Because it's for you to decide now. Mm. You could go out and do all these things, turn your own happiness on. Or you could, you know, sit at home, do absolutely nothing, turn your own happiness on. It's all to you. You're in control of that. Yeah. What makes you, what do you think will prevent you or not lead you in the direction of being a bully or being a boss that does that controlling or that of that happiness and dictating? Because Running a company, doing things like yeah. that, you, you do have to, you would have to take, make some decisions yeah. and do certain things that um, may not always be soft. They would have to yeah. be hard. You have to take some hard decisions. So now the difference that would be, you know, between like someone else and me, like another boss versus me, is that since now that I've being through what I've been through with all the bullying and stuff, and I would know how it is. I'd be able to sympathize with the person that's, you know, the employee. And instead of being so aggressive to the others, explain them, actually be human instead of treating them like shit and, you know, treating them like animals. So I feel like that's what would set me apart is that I know what I've been through. And now I can use that experience to, you know, just. Be kind, you know, there's no need to be so rude to people all the time. Make sure you may be frustrated, but even nowadays when I was doing this entire event, there wasn't really, you know, a need for me to go do something that would, you know, completely piss off my staff mates and stuff, the people that were helping me with this. Because it was all like, you know, it was more like, like a leadership. I had the idea and you know we all worked together to make this come true. Welcome. Here at Counseling Studio, the therapy or counseling sessions are free. If you have mental health questions, for example, depression, child development, relationships, drug and alcohol questions, any concerns, type them in the comment section or private message me on Facebook. I left the link in the description of this video.